In this video I want to talk about instant logic gate um, and some problems um, they usually have and how to solve these problems. So for example right here we have an instant XOR gate which I made something like 3 years ago and you can see it's an XOR gate it's instant but um, it has the problem that if you um, change multiple inputs at once then it can break and that's not um, good if your logic gate breaks um, because if you have it in a computer then you will often change multiple inputs at once for example if I um, activate this repeater if I click this lever then this repeater and this torch will um, change inputs in the same game tick and this thing can't handle that and it will go down and then up even though it should stay up all the time and the reason this happens is because um, this logic gate is not um, properly synchronized. So um, it's kind of similar to um, this logic gate right here. This is just a normal XOR gate. And um, this is of course not instant. And I, this is just an XOR gate. And it has a problem that if you activate um, both input, inputs at the same time or deactivate them, then you get an additional pulse. And we have a similar problem over here. And um, this also affects bigger contraptions. For example, here is an um, instant adder um, by Pi. I will just link it in the description. And if you activate here, to, if you change two inputs at once in here, then it also first pulses and then it gets to a correct result. So it um, can cause uh, problems in big instant computers if you get these pulses. And um, the solution to get rid of them is to um, synchronize the delays. For example, if I just add some delays right here, then I don't get this pulse anymore. And the reason for this is that the delays are now properly synchronized. Because before you had the situation that um, this um, line here goes into this torch, and then two game ticks later, this right here might change, and then the tor torch has to change state again. Um, and if you add an additional delay here, then um, these two change at once when these two are synchronized and then the, this torch only changes states once. Um, it's a thing that you often do in computers that you synchronize your circuits and the delay so you don't get problems with short pulses and everything works out fine. And you need to do something similar with, um, with instant logic. Now with instant logic you don't need to synchronize for um, game ticks because everything happens within the same game tick but you need to um, watch out for uh, block event ticks or micro ticks or however you call them as zero tick delays because um, most people when they build instant logic gates they don't really keep track of it and then um, they run into problems. So for example um, right here this um, instant repeater has um, some very weird um, Theoretic delay, so if I just um, show how the block events work out, if I activate this, then first this one will get a block event, so we have one block event tick delay, then this one will extend, when this one extends, then this one will be unpowered and gets a block event, then this one retracts, and this one gets another block event because he wants to do with you. Um, tick pulls block dropping, and then this one gets an another block event but only when um, the block is dropped, so um, this has a free um, block event tick delay. But if you um, turn it off, then the only thing that will happen is that this one will get a block event, and when this block event gets processed, then this line will be instantly off. So for turning on, this repeater has a, a free block event delay, and for turning off, it has only one block event delay. This causes problems, because for example, if you um, turn this one on and in the same game take this one off, then this uh, one turning off will be much faster because it has only one block event tick delay and this one will have three block event delay and so this one will turn off two block events before this one and this means that this piston will first retract and then we get these weird zero tick off pulses which we don't want. Um, okay, so we just need a better um, so we basically we just need a better um, instant repeater. Now the one I have is not really better, but it is at least uh, synchronized. This is an instant repeater right here. 
and it has the property that for turning on it takes four block event ticks and for turning off it also takes four block event ticks. So um, it's synchronized and which and that makes it much easier to build logic gates where something like this doesn't happen. But even if you use this um, repeater you sti will still need to keep track of block event ticks. You can't just build an instant logic gate and think that it works out perfectly. Um, but if you just keep track of block event ticks in general then it works out. So for example here we have a similar situation like um, over here. Here we have two instant repeaters. We will turn off one and turn on one. The same game tick. We will do the same thing over here. We have one instant repeater over here, one instant repeater over here. And if I turn them um, both on and off in the same block event tick, then um, this piston won't retract because he will get turned on and off within the same block event tick, so he will only get a zero block event tick off pulse, and this means he won't retract. And um, if you use this and repeat two repeaters, then you can actually do instant logic without getting zero tick pulses and pistons reacting to them. Um, yeah. And then you can use these kinds of circuits to build um, logic gates. Now this is very big. I will probably con compact it further, but I just want to show the concept that you can actually do instant logic with them. So right here we have an XOR gate, and over here is the output. You can see it's an instant XOR gate. And Let me just clear the weather. Um, but the nice thing is that it can handle if you um, turn multiple things on and off at once. So, so for example, if I turn on both inputs at once, then the piston over there will never extend. You won't get any um, weird pulses because we synchronize for all the delay and we make sure that everything has the same block event tick um, length, delay and stuff. For example, right here we have an instant repeater. This um, instant repeater isn't inverting anything, but it just makes sure that um, that we activate this, that we change this line at the same time at, we, at which we change this line. And something I should mention is that you can very easily convert this instant repeater into an instant inverter. So you just do this and then it's an instant inverter. Because basically whenever the input changes here, then um, this piston will get a zero tick and then the input changes here. That's basically how this thing works. And um, so we have just an XOR gate here and we just make sure that all the block event delays really uh, are synchronized and then you get a logic gate where you don't get any weird process and I can also um, show the other thing that you can have something like this and if you do this then you also don't get any weird pulses so this piston stays extended all the time and doesn't um, retract. You can also do this and then this piston will act instantly and everything works out just fine. So um, I just show this video because there are some people who think that it's logic can't work because you always get these pulses, but you only get these pulses if you don't watch out for these pulses. Um, something I should mention is that with these logic gates you need to make sure that um, you change both of these inputs within the same block event tick. This is also similar to here for example. For example if I do something like this then I will get a pulse because I turned on um, the inputs in different game ticks and then I can't expect anything but a pulse because it will calculate it. And similarly um, with this thing you need to make sure that you turn on or off both inputs within the same block event tick. Um, but if you do that then this thing works out fine and you can put it on a free first on the block and it will calculate everything correctly. So um, at any given point it should be correct. So if I just pause, um, currently both inputs are on and the piston is retracted, so everything is correct and all that stuff. So um, you can make instant logic work. It's just um, very big and I will compact it further, but if you just keep track of block event ticks then it works. Um, over here I have a 2-bit adder. Over here we have a 1s, here we have a 2s, and here we have a 4s, and it's really big. But um, it basically just uses the XOR gates and it has three of them and with, it uses them as half adders and together they make a complete adder. 
when um, at some point we have additionality day just to make sure that um, everything links up and when you have um, an instant logic gate where you can change multiple inputs at once without getting any problem for example if I add um, activate these two ones at once then it won't cause any problems but it will just extend the two and I just want to show that you can make instant logic gates 